Goodwill. How are you? Still, still coming off the reverberation from the the intro. That's why my hands are. It hits you hard. It does. We we come at you hard. We come at you fast. It really just comes at us fast because we're uh, just quiet. We're just sitting here like this, and then and then bam. There you go. Wolf Wolf Den podcast all in your face. How's and your it, ears. And you, we're just we're just all up in you. Yeah. Uh Trap, thank you for the five months. FF Neto thank you for the prime subscription. Angry Eric, thank you for the six months. Howdy y'all, Bob, your channel here and on YouTube mean a lot to me and help me get through the day. Thanks, man. Thank you, Angry Eric, for your support. I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad you're here. And Smash TPX, thank you for the two months. I appreciate you all. Guys, next week we have Kevin Kenson on. Yep. So, Handsome Will will be on the show. <laughs> um, so if uh, if you got any questions for him, leave it in the comments of this YouTube video. If you're on Twitch, go to the YouTube video tomorrow and leave some comments for, for mm-hmm. Kevin Kenson. Um, anyway, today we have a lot to talk about. We uh, do. I want to talk about... Uh, all of the games coming out this year because I'm going to have a video on Thursday about all of the Nintendo Switch games coming out this year. So I want to have this podcast to go over the rest of the games that are coming out this year that are very important because the Switch isn't the only important thing. But (laughs) our subscribers really only care about the Switch. So this is kind of a dumping ground for the rest of it. Also, we have Celia from Yacht Club on the show. Yeah. We had we had a little conversation with her yesterday that we're going to play uh, about Cyber Shadow, a game that I am in love with. A game that I was going to play last night, but then I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't touched it yet, still. I I no, oh, I no, touched you did. it. I'm, you did. I'm just I'm not very far in that game at all. Right. So. Right. Uh. So yeah, we got a very busy show today because there's also a lot of news too. But first, before we get into any of that, at the end of the month, we always talk about the free games you can get for the next month. At the well, now since we're on Tuesday and they like to put it out, Sony especially likes to put it out on Wednesday. We now have to talk about it in the month. uh, That's the games are available for. Yes. Yeah. So, write to Sony and tell them to do better. Um, (laughs) But. Uh, it is a new month. It is February, and that means you get new games for free if you're subscribed to either PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold. And we got some good games from both sides of the both sides of the aisle this month, Bob. Oh, do uh, we? Yes, we do. Uh, so PlayStation Plus, um, starting today, February second, twenty twenty one, Groundhog's Day in the United States. Um. You get Destruction All Stars on the PS5, which I think is I think it's uh, this is the game's debut, isn't it? Yes. Let me let me see. Just double check when Destruction All Stars came out because I think this might be the first time it's available. You got it. Uh, yeah. It comes uh, out February second. Yeah. So there you go. You get a brand new game for your PS5. It's only on PS5, though. I should clarify. However, I'm glad it's free because they made a big deal about it and it didn't look that great. But for free, I mean, well, it's not free. It's free if you have a PlayStation Plus subscription. So um, you can give it a try. Yeah. Without spending any money. Uh, Again, it's only on PS5. However, for PS4 and PS5, you get Control Ultimate Edition. Okay. This is the version of the game that comes with the you know the base game, the DLC, and the next gen version of the game. Remember there was the whole controversy where if you owned regular control, you weren't eligible to get the next gen upgrade. You had to go and actually buy control ultimate edition to get Correct. the next gen upgrade. Yeah. So now you don't have to buy control. You just have to buy a PlayStation Plus subscription, which you probably already have. So here's my question. Here's my question, Will. Yeah. I got this. I got it for Xbox. It's still right. like packaging. You had it yeah. for like a long time. I had it. 
I was gonna play it, and then they said it was gonna come on PS4, so I'm like, all right, I'll just give Bob back his copy. So does that mean I don't get the Series X version if I put this in my Xbox? No, if you put that in your Series X, you're gonna get the last gen version. So why, why so do I like, even? Why do I even? I know, like, I know. It's it's ridiculous, especially on Xbox when they have smart delivery. It's it should just be automatic. Um, I, I mean, it's their fault. It's what is it? Well, Remedy? it's Rem- Remedy's fault. Yeah, they they had a dumbass reason for it that I think everybody just called BS on because it it's not even worth you know getting mad over well it is worth getting mad over because you're you're basically saying in order to get the next gen version you have to buy this game again if you already bought it so basically i have it i bought the disc but mm-hmm. i should be playing it on playstation 5 because it's i can download it on place my playstation plus subscription because, because you will get and it's because you will get the next gen version you will that get is, the playstation 5 version that makes me so mad <laughs> i know it, it's it's crap like this where like you have companies like microsoft that are trying to make you know the transition to next gen simple and easy and beneficial to the player you know they'll just give you the next gen upgrade you know uh recently resident evil 8 village they said if you buy it on previous gen we will give you the next gen version for free when you get you know and you can upgrade whenever you get your next gen console remedy here is just like nah sorry bro (laughs) buy the game again i I, uh new manon in the chat says does work for series x had to pay 37 dollars for the series x s upgrade i paid 40 for the game when it came out yeah so ba- basically, I yeah, you're it was on Amazon game again. Game. Yeah, I'm not doing that, especially when I can freaking yeah. get it for PlayStation Five. For I have a PlayStation Plus subscription, so I can just download it. I Which mean, it's for really annoying because I haven't used my PlayStation Five in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. use my Series X for basically everything. Uh, for and look, for all intents and purposes, the the difference between the last gen version of Control and the next gen version of Control is really like you know you get the 4K resolution and probably an improved frame rate so it's not like it's going to be a drastically different game but you know if they have the ability to deliver an improved version of the game give it to everybody don't you know put it behind an arbitrary paywall like this all right last thing we have here is concrete genie concrete genie yeah big whoop (laughs) I don't know. I'm being an asshole. This I don't, a, I don't really think this game. Isn't this a graffiti game? Uh probably. There's a there's oh. a VR mode. It's not like what I thought it was. Alright, cool. You mean it's not all right. You mean it's not just Jet Grind Radio? It kind of looks like you know, now that you say that, it kind of looks like it because they're freaking uh this dude's like skating around. Yeah. Uh but it's like mystical. I, I I was thinking Mark Echoes getting up and then Oh right. This doesn't look I have that, like that game. I should play that game. No, I shouldn't. This is giving me psycho knots vibes. Oh um, yeah. I mean it looks kinda cool though. Yeah. Should game reviews shot. gave it a nine point five out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> uh so I mean give those a try. See what's up. Yeah. On your PlayStation. On Xbox yeah. now. On Xbox now. This Five is interesting days? because yeah, so we're getting five games this month, aside from the usual four. Um, so for the entire month of February, you get on the Xbox One, uh, which again can be played on Series X and S, uh, you get Gears 5 and the Resident Evil remake, the HD version. Okay. For the entire month of February. Those are two pretty big deal games right out the gate i mean gears 5 is very new and they've been using gears 5 as like a showpiece for their next gen systems because that's getting like 4k upgrades uh, 120 frame rate in multiplayer and things like that that's so I, basically that was one of the first games that i played to try the 120 yeah so basically they're giving everybody a tech demo for their new system so that if you get a series x or s you can immediately just try something out at you know the best possible level. 
which is really nice of them. Redfield uh, versus Evil in the chat says, isn't Gears 5 on Game Pass already? Yes. Yes. This is um, uh, but this Games is, with Gold. Yes. If you don't have Game Pass, um, this this is the time to get Gears 5. And it's good because uh, Best Buy was selling Gears 5 for $5 last month. I missed it, and now I don't need to worry about it. <laughs> It does say on the bottom Game Pass. I guess if these games weren't already on Game Pass, they are also on Game Pass now. Uh, well, Gears Five because you know it's a Microsoft first party title, so that's that went to Game Pass day and date with you know its release. So if I guess if it's you know they're just reminding you that it's also on Game Pass if you have Game Pass, right? Yeah. Uh, and the Resident Evil remake. This is probably. If you ever wanted to play classic fixed camera style Resident Evil, this is the only Resident Evil in that style I would recommend you play. It, th this updated version uh, gives you the option of tank controls, right? Like you can use tank controls right. or you not. Use the classic tank controls. tank controls. Or, yeah, they gave you a new control scheme that's better suited for modern sensibilities and still that fixed camera perspective. Oh, but yeah. not only that continue i'm sorry uh, i was gonna say not only that you know it's still still really scary it still pays very well uh, it's still it's it's not bogged down by resident evil bullshit like a lot of those games were so it's just you know you in a, in a scary mansion surrounded by zombies do your best to survive <laughs> they bring a, a book the chat brings up a good point. Game Pass Ultimate is it comes with gold, so right. <laughs> it actually doesn't have anything to do with the fact that it's uh, it. It, yeah. it doesn't have anything to do with Game Pass, but it mm -hmm. says right here that the Game Pass Ultimate members will also receive all the fantastic benefits of gold plus access to over 100 high quality games from right. Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, yeah. So there but, you go. I think this is this is messaging that's like trying to uh, ease people into Ultimate yeah being like look it's the same you get the same stuff yeah anyway we also got dandara uh, dandara uh trials of fear edition from february 16th to march 15th um I don't know what this is don't know anything about this game <laughs> discover secrets dangers Ooh. and an array of unique characters in the world of salt in this Metroidvania style platformer, a heroine arises out of the ether to fear out of the ether of fear to help a world on the brink of collapse, featuring stunning handcraft pixel art and an original soundtrack compositions that bring visual and auditory wonderland to life. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. That should be on the Switch. <laughs> I actually, I I think this is pretty cool. I might, uh, I might. Yeah, uh, no, that that looks like a good game. Yeah, I'll just download it, right? Yeah, why not? So, uh, well, February sixteenth. <laughs> oh, I have to wait. I was gonna say it says buy yeah. at the top. Yeah, that looks pretty yeah, cool. No. Resident Evil, Resident Evil, Gears Five are currently available. As is the first of. Uh, a, it's an original Xbox game. Usually it's Xbox 360, but this is an original Xbox game and a game I'm actually playing right now. Indiana Jones and the and the Emperor's Tomb from February 1st to the 15th. So how are you playing it? Uh, on my Xbox One. I have the disc. I bought the disc at like too many games or packs or whatnot. So, and so, I was playing so, so, I was playing on Xbox One, yeah. They saw that you were playing it and they were like the user base just went up by a hundred percent yeah people are interested in indiana jones and the emperor's yeah, well, tomb well if you think about it a microsoft owned studio is now making an indiana jones game so now's the time to get the hype train going and put out the last major indiana jones video game to come out <laughs> Uh, so have you now downloaded it and now you don't have to put the disc in anymore? Now I don't have to put the disc in, correct. Uh, yeah. It's it's a little convenience factor, but that I enjoy. <laughs> wow, lucky you. Yeah, it's uh, the first world, man. It's such a privilege. How are you enjoying your playthrough of this game? Um, look, I'm not going to lie. It, it's <laughs> it's rough. No, it's there's there's a lot that it does really well and there's a lot I like about it, but it's it's really hampered by a lot of like design choices of the time 
you know the the button layout is unnecessarily confusing um Look at him just squaring up with these two busty women <laughs> yeah <laughs> what the hell's going on here i know is this the, why you like this it game? actually has no. Uh, well, the the combat in it isn't that bad, actually. It's actually, it's very good. It's like really, you know, knockdown, you know, fist to cuff style combat, which is what Indiana Jones should primarily be. The problem is when you're fighting two dudes and one of them pulls a gun on you, you got to quickly swap to your gun. And this is before Resident Evil 4, where all games started doing over the shoulder aiming. Mm-hmm. So when you start shooting, you're just basically blindly firing, hoping you hit something. Um, I highly recommend if you're going to play this game, use the invincibility uh, cheat code because that not only uh, protects you from bad guys, it also gives you infinite ammo um, and you will need it. That That is cheating. It's It may be, but you know what? It still has a lot of platforming and puzzle elements that the invincibility code can't help you with. So there's that. Uh, and the last thing is Lost Planet 2. Lost Planet 2 from February 16th to the 28th. Uh, this was not the, the snow one. That was three. No, that was two, wasn't it? The snow one was three. Well, there's snow in this no. one. Because one of them... Lost Planet 1 was an Xbox 360 launch title. It was popular at the time and a lot of people really liked it because it had like a really interesting you know arctic planet uh one, feature one, to it. that's that's one yes well, that's one, one. Is the yeah. one yeah and then i think it was two that they they took it off the snow planet and everyone was like what are you doing we liked the snow planet give us back the snow planet <laughs> And then uh, three, they went back to the snow planet, but three was apparently a bad game. <laughs> uh, there was there was a cult following to the Lost Planet games. Yeah, uh, I think hey, I think I like the first one. Hey, it's me, Alex. Says, does Bob criticize everything? Yes, it is literally yes. my job to do so. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I do. So yeah. that's it for PlayStation and Xbox. Uh, go download Destruction All Stars Control for PlayStation. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Concrete Genie doesn't look too bad either. Um, True. Download Gears 5, download Dandara, <laughs> download Resident Evil. This is actually a pretty good month. Yeah, it's a very good month from both companies. Um, yeah. And download Indiana Jones because why if not? You dare. If you dare. <laughs> I want to bring up, people say we should always like talk about like there's epic free games every month. There's uh, Prime Gaming. If you have Amazon Prime, you link it to your Twitch yeah. account, get free games. You also can subscribe to us, even though we just, our, our stream just crashed. <laughs> In the middle of me freaking saying it. Um, but anyway, uh, there are a lot of free games on, on Prime yeah. Gaming. It looks like there's a lot of fighting games right now, but they're all until the end of March. Well, you gotta you gotta yeah. look it up. I'm trying to freaking uh, yeah. I'm bring bring the stream back to life. I'm trying I'm trying to pull it up now. Uh, Gaming.amazon.com. It's just giving me a blank screen. Okay, here we go. Yeah, the game. You gotta scroll down for games with Prime because it starts off with like all this weird loot you can get. Like you can get uh, yeah. two new helmets for Star Wars Squadrons. Oh boy, here we go. Games with Prime. Uh, the Lost Blade Two Samurai Showdown Five Special. The King of Fighters 2002. We're now reading through all of them. There's a lot of crap. Yeah. It's <laughs> mostly SNK games. Yes. They're all SNK games. Ooh, Metal Slug 2 and 3. Stealth Bastard. King of the Monsters. Spinch. That's not an SNK game. Spinch. I know Spinch. <laughs> let, me, let me look up a video for Spinch. Oh, my God. Not Spinach. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know this game. This is like a weird acid trip game. Stealth Bastards, I think, was also called Stealth Inc. Yes, on, on a PlayStation. Yeah, that game I know. And then the rest is just SNK games. Uh, Spinch is great platformer, very trippy. Yeah, I, I want to try this. Uh, sure, I'll download it. How do I download it from here? Claim. Uh, Select an account. Wolf Den. 
Yeah, that was easy. All right. Uh, so yeah, go check this out. You get a bunch of crap. Uh, more crap for free. I don't see anything else that's jumping out at me. You got a lot of free games you can get every month, so yeah. make sure you go through PlayStation, Xbox, Prime Gaming. There's also Epic Games. Uh, you can claim some free games. You you could be a broke gamer. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got some notifications here to go through. Uh, right. We got Big Key with 10 bits. Thank you. We got Seven with a hundo who says it's 3 a.m. on February 3rd here. Hello from the future. Whoa. So Tell me everything's better. Yeah. Do we get hover cars? We got Pika Pika with five months, almost half a year. You good looking bros. Thanks, dude. I appreciate you. Uh, best boy Jack says you have a podcast. No. <laughs> um. No. Nah, this is this is a this is a radio drama. So let's talk about the most anticipated games of the year. Yes. Uh, I have three articles here okay. because they all do different things good and different things bad. <laughs> okay. I like Vulture, who's the top article, because um, I think they do it in release order. Okay. Polygon has... Only order. <laughs> Polygon has a lot of good stuff, but they did it in alphabetical order. <laughs> ah... So we'll go through this Vulture article and we'll try to add our two cents where it's necessary. Um, yeah. Hitman 3. Have you tried this at all? You're no, a Hitman um, fan. I have I, never played a Hitman game before I, in my life. So I actually, I just got Hitman 2. So I'm really behind. Um, okay. But once I'm done with Indiana Jones, I'm going to jump immediately into Hitman because uh, Hitman 2 and then if if that game goes real, really well, which I th think it will, I'll go play Hitman Three. Um, but this looks cool. Um, it's the f it's the conclusion of the World of Assassins trilogy, whatever the hell that means. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, it's you know you're Agent Forty Seven, you're given a target in a fancy location, and your task is to kill the target and get out um by any means necessary and th these games are great because they give you a slew of options to accomplish your target they can there's you know guides in the game to help guide you towards a specific path or you can just ignore them and do it on your own um what's cool about this game is they've really they've varied the levels um they've added a lot more npcs so you can hide in crowds one of the missions is basically um you have there's a murder mystery going on and you have to kill one of the suspects. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically like knives out ex except uh, you have to kill, you know, one of the suspects that are in there. Um, this so that, and that's, that's these, rad. these games seem right up my alley. And for whatever reason, I just never played any of them. So here's the thing with the Hitman games though. I think they would be right up your alley, but there's a lot of patience mm -hmm. involved. In it. Cause so like, I mean, yeah, yes, you could just go run in there and, you know, guns blazing and go out. But, like, if you really take your time and plan and, like, think about what you're going to do, it becomes that much more satisfying and rewarding. Because, yes, you could just, you know, change your suit, sneak in, stab a guy, and then sneak out. But you could also set up elaborate traps for them. You can, like, find a good vantage point to snipe them. You can... Uh, kill them with a fish <laughs> um that's the thing you can do um so it's all this it's it's all this other fancy stuff that you can do it's not just you know assassinations it's the art of assassinations i guess you could say uh, no i like that uh, that's why i like stealth games i, li I like yeah. all that crap although i do like conviction a lot because of how f this stealth is very fast yeah no this is the opposite of that <laughs> right uh so I mean, I'll give it a shot. It's for a Nintendo Switch, PC, PlayStation 4, 5, Stadia, Xbox One, Series X, slash S. So it's for literally yes, for and everything. It's available now. It's streaming on on uh, Nintendo Switch. Switch. So Yes, so should we clarify that? Uh, so um, but you it, said it seems the... to run good. So, I mean, yeah. but again, make sure your internet's good. Maybe they've, they've yeah. pro there's probably a demo. If there's not a demo, play Control because that has a demo. Yeah. Um, and you can test to see if your internet's any good. I don't have my, I don't have my Switch here. I would have looked. 
Uh, next we have what's coming out next Friday. Yeah. Super Mario 3 World plus Bowser's Fury. So I don't want to talk too much about Nintendo Switch stuff because I want to do a video on Thursday about the Nintendo Switch stuff right. coming out this year. Um, but this is a big deal. Yes. It's the only big Nintendo IP that's coming out, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is this is the latest in Nintendo's line of Wii U games being put on a system you've ac you're actually owning and playing. Um, but what's cool here is that they basically added an entire new game to it, Bowser's Fury. Yeah, so, so we even like the original. We only recently got so so 3D World is a good game. I don't mm -hmm. want to trash 3D World too much. I don't I it's one of my least favorite 3D Mario games, but it's still yeah. a really really good game. And it and it's great if you want to play with other people. Um but I'm more excited about Bowser's Fury because that's a whole new part of the game so yeah we only like a week ago we learned what bowser's fury actually is and it's mm. basically a sandbox with a bunch of different uh i want to say missions yeah. so it's, it's kind of like uh having a new odyssey world but it's in the engine of mario 3d world so it's a little tiny game. It's like a little sandbox yeah. game. I don't know how long it is, but I'd imagine it's not that long. It's probably as long as it would take to 100% one Odyssey world. Yeah. Um, but there seems to be a lot to do in it. 60 bucks just for Bowser's Fury is a little much because I'm really only going to play that. But I'm probably going to mm -hmm. play 3D World with friends a little bit. Um so I'm excited. I'm excited to see what Bowser's Fury is all about. I, I hope uh, I hope it's got enough in it to like mm -hmm. satisfy me. I'm hoping it's at least like six hours. You know that'd be nice. Yeah. To like get everything you need. Um, and it has weird stuff like uh, like there's there's weather in it. Like you see how it's raining. Yeah. It has like a weather effect similar to Breath of the Wild when when the Blood Moon comes out and like all the enemies get all weird. Mm. same thing happens in this it starts to rain and then the enemies get all weird and things start appearing that weren't there before um so it's like a whole you know it, it's it's a big add-on it's like this is adding a lot mm -hmm. um so i'll uh uh well we'll see this in like a week yeah uh next we got balan wonderland who has a there is a demo i have not touched it yet oh this is made by the guy who did Nights into Dream and what else? Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Yuji like, Naka and art director uh, Noto Oshima. Yeah, the creators of Sonic the Hedgehog and Nights into Dreams. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So uh, So this better be good. <laughs> better be good. It's a platformer. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, it looks really good, especially if it's designed by those people. Um you, I mean, I'm getting Sonic vibes. Look at that. Look at that chibi yeah. nonsense. <laughs> but I, I read a preview of the demo and it was like, hey, this is like giving me weird Cats the Movie vibes. Because there's apparently like a musical number and there's like weird, there's there's weird shit in it. Yeah. Um, But the platforming looks good. Yo, that was just straight up Sonic. <laughs> I'm also getting like Mega Man vibes from some of these outfits. Oh, that was Sonic. Maybe I Maybe I will give this a shot. The platforming looks cool. Yeah. The, there's a demo out now you can try. I don't know if it's on Switch. Um, But the game's going to be out for Switch, PC, PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, Series yeah. X, S. So everything. Um, So give the demo a try, wherever it is right yeah. now. If you're interested in uh, some, some old school 3D platforming. Another game I'm excited about, It Takes Two. This is uh, developed by the guys that did um, uh, a way out. A no. way out. Yes. Was it? Yes. Is that the... Haslight? Who? Is that Haslight? Who's Haslight? Is that, is that the these develop... guys? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's yes. literally it, the second sentence in the. The same guys who made a way out are making this because this is the okay. same sort of situation where it's split screen, uh, uh, two players okay. in the whole yeah. game. It like requires two players. You can play as one okay. player, but the other player will be uh, friggin' uh, a bot. So um, this is specifically made to play with another person. Right. 
Uh, and A Way Out was great. There was a lot of like really interesting and cool things that it did that could only happen with a second person playing with you. Right. Uh, and this just seems like a cutesy version of that. So I'm excited. Also, there there will be online, so you can play with other people online. Um, now, I, this isn't confirmed yet, but A Way Out had it so that only one person needed the game. Yeah. So... I don't know if this is going to do a similar thing, but that would be cool. Uh, that'd be, yeah, that'd be nice. Hopefully, they could pull the same trick. Yeah. Maybe yeah, even cross-platform play as well. Uh, yeah, hopefully, because back then, cross-platform play wasn't as popular as it is now. Yeah. Now it's like assumed that it's going to have that. Yeah. You can see there's like a lot of like weird little puzzles that, that you that you do as, as two players. Mm-hmm. All right, next up, we got Disco Elysium, the final cut. Uh, I don't know anything about Disco Elysium. I know I, like, like all I know about Disco Elysium, yeah, is that people love this game. Uh, I don't know the difference between, like, what the final cut is supposedly going to be different, how the final cut is going to be different from the actual game. I'd imagine it's like a director's cut. It's just a re-release. Yeah. Near Replicant version 1.22474487139. Nine. Cool. So, is this a sequel or it's a re-release? Oh, it's a it's a remake of Near Replicant. Okay, so it doesn't have anything to do with Near Automata. Death Loop look, looks really cool. This is Arcade Studios, the guys who made Dishonored. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, this looks great. So, I don't what I've. I forgot the gimmick in this. You're a guy who's just being... Everybody in in the world is trying to kill you. Uh, Deathloop casts you as an assassin named Colt stuck in a time loop. Colt must find a way to take out his targets and escape the time loop, but there's a twist. There's another assassin stalking him. Even more delicious, that assassin is controlled by another player. So, so it's, it's like a weird... It's a weird, uh, like... Like... It's a weird multiplayer game. Like yeah. you're playing the game by yourself, but there's another guy hunting you who is a, a, a another actual yeah. human. That's um, that's cool. So imagine uh, Resident Evil, but Mr. X is played by a person like somewhere <laughs> else in the world. Yeah. Uh, I've played the first Dishonored, which Arcane made, and I really like that. Um, uh, haven't played anything else they've done. But what's interesting is that Arcane is owned by Bethesda, who is now owned by Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And this is not coming to Xbox. This is a PlayStation exclusive. Oh, I didn't realize that. So this might be the last death loop to come to a PlayStation system. Might be. We don't know. We don't know the extent of Microsoft's ownership over Bethesda. I would imagine that um Microsoft's really good at letting people have stuff, so I'd imagine yeah. <laughs> that the net, if there's another death loop, it'll come to Xbox. But I, you know, I'd imagine they they leave it open. Yeah, I, I only played a little bit of Dishonored, but I like that sort of movement shooter situation, and this seems yeah. pretty much the same. Yeah, just with a lot more focus on actually killing people, and um, you have another player hunting you the whole time. So that's pretty cool. Yeah uh is there a date may 21st all right i mean i want to try that just because i want to I, I, I like that multiplayer aspect yeah back for blood is coming for, uh coming to everything but switch yeah uh this is basically left for dead <laughs> yes it's made by total rock studios who made left for dead um yeah, so if you like Left 4 Dead, which everybody does, just get this. <laughs> there was another game that was basically Left 4 Dead. It was called Earth something? I don't know. I know that between this and, and Left 4 Dead, uh, Turtle Rock Studios made that game evolve. That was oh, supposed yes. to be like the next big multiplayer, <laughs> you know, uh, phenomenon, and nobody gave a shit. <laughs> Well, it, it was. It didn't go as planned. Like the meadow was yeah. weird. Like people figured out weird, like broken ways to win and stuff. It was like it wasn't balanced yeah. well. 
Yeah, I, t I, uh, I played this game that was like basically Left 4 Dead, but it was with aliens. Hmm. Left 4 Dead with aliens. But it was for PC only. Earthfall. That was it. But this seems a lot closer to Left 4 Dead also because for yeah. the same developers making it. So if you like Left 4 Dead, here you go. Finally, you get a new Left 4 Dead. Too bad you don't get it on Switch. Yeah. This was just announced today, was it not? The Mass Effect Legendary no. Edition? So this was announced previously, but like the reveal trailer of like the new features and stuff was today. Okay. So this so is this... a, a re-release of uh, or a remake of Mass Effect. It's uh, Mass Effect, the original Mass Effect. I guess it, it's a it's a remastering of the original Mass Effect trilogy. All three games. Um, they're they're gonna have like their own enhancements each. They're all gonna be 4K 60 and whatnot. Uh, the first game is going to get a lot of tweaks. The The UI is going to be different. Um, the the combat is going to be closer to what it was in the later games. Character customization across all three games is going to be revamped and be more in-depth. A big thing they said was that the, the default female Shepard, or Fem Shep as she's known, um, is going to be it's going to look closer as she did in Mass Effect 3 than she did in 1 and 2. I did not I was not aware that she looked different yeah. in the first two Mass Effect games. You, you I know. just I guess I just assumed that male Shep looks the same in all three. I might as well you know, I thought female Shepard also looked the same. Fans are very particular, you know. Of course, yeah, especially so the imagine, series. I'd imagine there was something that pissed them off. I should also know I've only ever played the first Mass Effect and quit after a certain point because I'm like, I don't think I like this game. So, yeah, I did the same thing. I think I played Mass Effect at the same time you did. We yeah. played it years after it came out, like a few years, like two mm -hmm. years after it came out or something. We played it before the second one came out. Yeah, because we wanted I remember... to get into the second one. Yeah. But the problem was the first game was immediately dated. It immediately dated itself. Like, yeah there, there i was, remember there was advancements in gaming that happened like right after Ma the first mass effect came out so we were like this it felt old almost immediately for us and i, rem I remember thinking because the primary gameplay loop in that is a cover shooter and it's it wasn't very good i'm thinking to myself i could just be playing gears of war i think so that's I what it was that's what there was cover mechanics and they weren't as good as gears of war and gears of but war I, like I, pioneered good cover mechanics well, there's that, and also what broke me finally was I really liked the dialogue trees in that game, like you know choosing your response to the conversation. Mm -hmm. But I picked an option, and then Shepard's reaction was not what I wanted him to do. That happens a like lot I, in games like this. I picked, I, I, I think I picked the neutral answer, and he shot the person. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, that's completely wrong. <laughs> That happens a lot in games like this. It'll yeah. it'll it'll give you something. And you're like, oh, I want to see that. And then he says it in like a weird tone or something that yeah. you're like, oh wait, what? Um, but I also played Mass Effect Andromeda, and I was and the only person that yeah. loved Mass Effect Andromeda. I think it's because I never played much of the other games. I only played a yeah. little bit of the first one and gave up. So I actually really liked Mass Effect Andromeda. So I feel like I should play this, and I would probably really like it. Maybe. Uh, even though I'm not that into games like this, but. I will say the first one is very RPG heavy. They lightened up on that, like as the series went on, but the first one is like a lot of like traditional RPG crap. I think what I liked about Andromeda was that there was like an easy mode for people who don't like RPGs. Like you just, yeah. you could just auto level and stuff. You don't have to sit there and pick your stats and whatever. Um, and I liked that, but nobody else did because RPG people really liked the way it was before. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to skip around. We got Psychonauts 2. Uh, yeah. Not coming for Switch. What the hell? Huh. Weird. That's to be dated. Resident Evil yeah. Village has a date, though, and we learned a lot about that last week. Yes. Uh, uh, May, I believe it's coming out. Yes. Uh, this looks very good. I want to yeah. play 7 before I get to that. I have a lot of work to do. Yeah, same. <laughs> Did you see Um, they confirmed Tall Lady's height? Yes, I have part of that for a tweet of the week. Uh, okay. But yeah, the tall lady in the trailer is nine feet tall. Yeah, with nine with her hat six heels. inches. Yeah. Oh, with Something her like hat heels. Yeah, but still, that's very tall for a human. Well, she's I think she's a vampire, so it's very tall for a lady. Yes, I'm glad we all got to the bottom of that, though. Yeah. 
But yeah, Resident Evil Village looks great. Uh, we talked about it yeah. a lot more last week. Yeah. Shumagami Tensei Five has been coming out forever. It's yes. one of the first Switch games that was ever talked about. Mm -hmm. um, and it's supposed to be coming out this year, but we still don't have a hard release date yet. Yeah. Uh, and, and we only have three with... trailers, I believe, and they're all cinematic. I think there's like seconds yeah. of of actual gameplay. Yeah, the same can be said for the next game on this list, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Oh. That's been announced, you know, that was announced a while ago. It was supposed to come out last year. Um, I think all we have are cinematic trailers, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, I, this doesn't look great. Apparently it's, these these games are like a cult following, but like I don't. They're I've based on like the cult. They're following. based on like hardcore tabletop games. Oh, uh, that's why. Fun fun fact: the first Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines is the second game released, um, made on the Half Life Source Engine, Half Life Two Source Engine. I did not know that. And they actually had to delay the release of that game because they finished it before Half Life Two was released. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So Source didn't even exist yet, so they weren't allowed. Basically, to. yeah. Uh, we don't care about Warhammer. Yeez. That's coming for Switch. Another uh, one, yeah. I'm skipping that. Um, Hollow Knight, Silk Song. Okay, this is a big deal. Everybody's really excited for Hollow Knight, Silk Song. Yeah. But, so this is a one people have been excited for. I think this this was announced very soon after Hollow Knight came out. Yeah, people, or Hollow Knight came out for the Switch, I should say, and people were people were excited about this game since then. And I thought it was going to be DLC. Yeah. Um, it might have been announced as DLC, and then they were like, "No, nah, it's a whole game." But it's still to be dated, twenty twenty one. So we still don't yeah. know anything about it really since this trailer. When was this? Oh, this is the announcement trailer. This is twenty seventeen. No, nope, twenty nineteen. Feb two years ago, this announcement trailer uh, was released. Um, so yeah, people are excited for this. I I will play this when it comes out. I didn't like Hollow Knight as much as everybody else did, but I did like it. It was very good. Rue, are you um, chewing on one of my freaking controllers? I will murder you. Wolf Den Podcast, the only podcast where puppy violence... <laughs> I think he's chewing on a box, but I, he's right next to. I threw all of those Joy-Con controllers. I threw them all on the ground, <laughs> so they're there's they're prime. Yeah. Uh, you're shifty eyed. I don't trust you at all. All right. I don't know what this is. Uh, the cat season. season. I saw that. I'm not interested. Ghostwire Tokyo. I am interested. This, in. this was revealed at um, E3. I think two, three years ago. This was um, the game that anything. got what's her name famous. Yeah, and then she immediately left Tango GameWorks. <laughs> She's like, "I'm more famous than you guys now. I gotta leave." Yeah, the the art director, whatever, whoever, whatever yeah. her name was. Um, but this game looks awesome. She did a really yeah. good job. Yeah, it's um directed by Shinji Mikami, famous for, of course, Resident Evil Four, um, The Evil Within. Evil Within series, uh, Disney's Aladdin for the Super Nintendo. Um, so, yeah. Disney's Aladdin for the Super Nintendo? Yeah, that was like one of his earliest games. I did not know that. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, because it worked at Capcom for years. So, uh, But yeah, this game looks gorgeous. Um, I'm, yeah. I want to try this out. Uh, only for PC and PlayStation 5. Oh, really? Yep. Oh. What is this solar no, ash? No, no. Oh, it's the guys who made Hyperlight Drifter, Heart Machine. Oh, that's okay. why this looks good. That's that's good. Kind of looks like Hyperlight Drifter, just a three yeah. version. Uh, Hyperlight Drifter was an amazing two uh, D Zelda type game mm -hmm. or top down Zelda type game. Um, yeah, but you know it was like stylized weird. Um, it was awesome. I love that game. Yeah. And so here we have like a 3D platformy version of that. It looks like she's on roller skates or something. Uh it looks great. So I will be trying this out too. This says only PlayStation 5. Huh. Uh when is that? 
to be dated. These are all yeah. we're at the to be dated. Yeah, yeah. A lot of these are um, gonna, are going to be delayed. I think yeah. Strays the uh the cat simulator. Yeah, we don't know what the gameplay is going to be like. We just know that you're a cat in the world and you're a cat in a world full of robots. Yeah. You're potentially the only living creature. Um, and it looks like you play as a messenger cat. Yeah. But yeah, we don't know anything about what the actual gameplay is like. We only got this cinematic yeah. trailer. This is part of like the PlayStation 5 reveal. Yeah. But it looks cool. God of War Ragnarok is coming out this year too. Supposedly. Yeah. I don't I don't know if I buy it. Yeah, I don't know. Definitely not. It's definitely not coming out this year. All we have is this title yeah. screen teaser. Um Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know huh. about this one. I think yeah. it'll be delayed till early twenty twenty two. But definitely. This one I'm pretty sure we're gonna get this year. Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite. Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like they really need it to come out this year. Yeah, I mean, they delayed it a long time. They delayed it a whole year, but they delayed it uh, from the launch of the system it was supposed to sell. Yes, so, but they gave themselves a lot of time to fix whatever they needed to fix. It's not like a like yeah. a cyberpunk situation where they only gave themselves like a few weeks. <laughs> at a yeah. time when they were delayed it they were like they yeah. were straight up like no we need a lot of time yeah but i think that'll be good and i wouldn't be surprised if they take the opportunity microsoft to use Ow. the launch of halo infinite as Ow. a soft relaunch of this xbox series x you know i saw the dog mouth on one of the controllers like this snoot to controller <laughs> yeah so i had to scare him out well good Get the fuck out. Yeah. So yeah, they'll probably be like, hey, Halo, the Halo Infinite that you can play on the new Xbox Series X and S systems. Uh buy this for the best experience. They should make a Halo edition Xbox. hundred percent Uh this will sell systems for sure. Yeah. But it's gonna be on PC and Xbox One. True. However, I feel like the Halo fans are the type of people who don't really PC game. They just want something to plug into their TV and play on their couch. You know? I, I don't know. A lot of people were really excited when Halo came to PC. True. They were like, I finally get to replay Halo. Yeah. I don't know. I always feel like PC market is different from like the console market there's a lot of overlap but like console to me is a lot more casual mm -hmm. and halo is a much more casual first person shooter experience yeah but it doesn't it doesn't mean that uh like hardcore gamers on pc it doesn't mean that they can't enjoy casual stuff too no i know that but i'm th i'm saying in terms of you know is the is the release on PC going to affect the sales on Xbox Series or sales of Xbox Series in general? I don't think so. Is what I'm saying. I don't know because, like, um, I mean, I think people would have just bought an Xbox if 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 they really wanted it that bad and they it wasn't coming out on PC. Right. Um, but there are a lot of people who, you know, like like big Twitch streamers now. Like, for example, Ninja was a professional mm -hmm. Halo player. Right. So he plays on PC now. He plays everything on PC. He's going to play Halo on PC when it comes out. Right. A lot of people are hoping that Halo they that they make a battle royale for Halo, but they they said that they're not going to do that. Yeah. They said that's not Halo is not that type of game. But yeah. they might have delayed it to make a battle royale. <laughs> True. I mean, they added a horde mode after that got big, so mm -hmm. I would not be surprised if they add battle royale mode. Uh uh, uh, the battle royale mode would be very popular. Yeah, a, a lot of a lot of big time Twitch streamers would be interested in that. Mm -hmm. uh, last on this list is Untitled Breath of the Wild uh, sequel, which we've that's known about. Not, that's not coming this year. <sighs> Nintendo needs something big this year because right, I, yeah. the, all of last year we had n nothing. I mean, we had Animal Crossing, 
but we had no big deal game really mm -hmm. um i mean they sold a shit ton of games like like the 3d all-star collection might not have been a big deal paper mario might not have been a big deal to like us but uh yeah. it sold a lot of copies oh yeah um, but us nintendo fans need a, a big triple a brand new game like the mm -hmm. breath of the wild sequel Breath of the wild sequel metroid prime 4 something along those lines yeah um i'm gonna i'm gonna quickly plow through these other prince of persia yeah. what's that about like that's i think is i think that's just a remake of sands of time yes it is it comes out in march oh god i hope they delay it because it did not look good oh it, i didn't know that, that there was even anything about it it looks it looks so weird like that, the visual style not that, into that article left out ratchet and clank a rift apart which is a big deal really but it comes out quarter one yeah. or quarter two 2021 so we don't know exactly when it's coming oh. out but this yeah. is going to be a big deal playstation 5 game uh sure allow oh yeah give me whatever you want boyfriend dungeon what? has been out already there's no way this is not it's not oh it never came out Huh. How do, how come I've seen maybe I've just seen trailers for this forever. Far Cry 6, I wouldn't say that's a most anticipated game. <laughs> well, I mean it's got uh Giancarlo Esposito as the villain. People like him when he plays villains. I mean it looks really cool, but I mean I've played yeah. Far Cry so much. I know, that's the problem. Uh we also got Horizon Forbidden West coming out this year. Yeah. That article left out a lot. Uh people are excited for Horizon. Gotham yeah. Knights comes out this year. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that'll be good. No, so I'm ex I'm excited for that one cuz it <laughs> it is No, I'm I'm serious. It, it's 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 concept alone is different enough to finally, you know, breathe a fresh air into the Batman video game series cuz you don't play as Batman, you play as all of his kids. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just see Diablo 4? Yeah. Oh, there's no there's no release date. So yeah. forget it. Uh so I have a bunch there's a bunch more Nintendo Switch games that haven't been uh re like talked about or, or not, not yeah. they haven't been like they've been announced and nothing happened. Like Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2, Yokai Watch 4, Bayonetta 3, Hollow Knight, Shovel Knight Dig, Azure Striker Gun Vault 3, Metroid P Prime 4, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel. And I'm sure there's a bunch of others. Um, so yeah, we got we got a lot. Something's Nintendo's gonna have something this year. Yeah, it might be Breath of the Wild sequel. It might be Bayonetta three. I don't know though because they said that that game will we'll have more info for you when we have it. I think the problem is Nintendo's usually not the type of company to announce games like years in advance. They usually like to wait a little bit until like the year the game is going to come out yeah i think the only exception was like zelda and metroid um so i think that's that's part of the problem is that they wait so long to tell people what's coming i thought yokai 4 was already out or was that just in japan probably just in japan, probably just in japan. there's a lot of good stuff that's uh out in japan but not here yet um only in Japan. Yep. It came out in 2019 yeah. in Japan. All right. Um, we got some notifications here we got to go over. What are your All favorite right. games that you're looking forward to? Do we leave anything out? Especially if... Did we uh, leave any Switch games out? Yeah. I know Monster Hunter Rise is one that I left out, but uh, we'll probably talk more about that later. Um, We got... We got seven with 100 bits. I love Hitman. Played every single one and basically grew up with the franchise. Have the logo tattooed on my ring, right ring finger. Damn, son. You can get the barcode on your neck? Yeah, you shave your head and get your barcode. <laughs> get a barcode. Come on, what kind of fan are you? Tyler PM with nine months. Sup. Sup. Thank you. Yo. <laughs> 
Uh, Meow Kristen with one. Oh, he, she gifted a sub to Hi, I'm Viv. Thank you for the gift sub. Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, all right. Now is the time, Will. Yes. Um, we have our big conversation with Yacht Club that we have to show you. Um, yes. This is something that we did on our own accord. This isn't sponsored or anything. I just genuinely yeah. really like Cyber Shadow. And uh, I saw that they were available for interviews. So we took that opportunity. Plus, we're friends with Celia. We met her when she worked at uh, Hyperkin. Yes. Um, at E3. She was in our E3 video talking about Hyperkin stuff. Um, and now here she is working at Yacht Club talking about Cyber Shadow. And we grilled her and the developer, but the developer <laughs> wasn't available. Yeah. We sent the developer, what's his, Arne. Yeah. We sent Arne a bunch of questions and uh, he answered them in text form and we read them out to you and discussed them with Celia. So um, we're going to play that for you right now. And we'll, uh, and we'll be in the chat. So take it away, uh, Will and Bob from yesterday. Oh, hello, uh, Bob and Will from the future. I hope it's yeah. not as cold. Uh, we're here. Yeah, and this. hover cars were invented in a day. It's not going to happen. Celia, hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic. How are, how are you doing this week? Uh, this is like your hell week because uh, it's launch week. Yeah. Yeah. It's It's been definitely uh, hectic, but uh, it, it's been really fun. This Is this your first shipped game, technically? Yeah, it is. It's really exciting. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you 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 work at Yacht Club now. What do you do at Yacht Club? Um, so I handle marketing. I also handle PR and social media and a little bit of licensing. Licensing, okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So so we sent you a bunch of questions for your boy over there at Cyber Shadow, which you, which was launched mm -hmm. last Tuesday on yeah. the Switch and everything. It's on everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, literally I've, everything. <laughs> I've been playing a lot of it. I like it a lot. If it if it came out last year, it might have been my game of the year. Well, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully, it's, it's this year. <laughs> this is twenty twenty one. Well, how much have you? Uh, not too far into it, but everything I've played of it, I really like so far. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it feel it feels good. It feels like um, a classic NES game, but like with all the nice additions of modern gaming, uh, it's very difficult but that's i feel like that's more my fault than the game's fault <laughs> why no, it's, not, it's difficult yeah. <laughs> it's really hard <laughs> i i i like the difficulty but i'm i'm, I'm a little bit of a sadist i mean well yeah. how far are you will where, where you say that it, it's difficult I, i'm not very far at all like i'm i don't even think i got to the first boss yet oh my god you did you're yeah. already thinking it's difficult and i yeah <laughs> So I know I'm I'm probably gonna hate this game by like the time I get to the end, but uh, I I did curse a lot, but yeah, I do really like. It. And I mean, there's, it's not like Ninja Gaiden, like the original Ninja Gaiden, where like you have lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, so, like, that's what I like about it. You can keep going. Right, yeah. right, right. I've been playing it over on, on all on this Twitch channel, and it's been uh, yeah, I like it a lot. I think I have two more chapters left. So I'm like I'm like right at the, I got one more stream in me and I think I'm I'm good. Yeah. Uh but it, it is it is absolutely fantastic. I have this thing th there's this weird thing where like people come in the chat and they go, "Oh, this reminds me of Metroid." "Oh, this reminds me of uh uh Castlevania." "Oh, this reminds me of random NES game that I played because none of them have ever played Ninja Gaiden." <laughs> right. <laughs> it reminds me of like when people are you ever seen that meme that's like uh uh, guy who has only ever seen Boss Baby watching the Avengers. This is giving me hard Boss Baby vibes. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> <laughs> they think everything looks like. Anyway, um, so we sent. What's who's who's the guy? This is developed by one guy. Mm -hmm. Arne. Yes. Yeah. Arne. Okay. So uh, we sent him questions, and you're here to be his little uh, interpreter. Do you have the questions in front of you? Are we reading I, the questions? <laughs> we'll read the questions. I have the questions. And I All can right. read his answers. Okay. All right. Uh, Question one. <laughs> yes. Uh, how did you come into contact with Yacht Club Games? What made you want to work with them on Cyber Shadow? 
Uh, and he said, I had I had been a big fan of theirs from the moment I saw the Shovel Knight Kickstarter and their project proved there's an audience for this type of games. Much later, I was just casually minding my business, posting GIFs of my game on Twitter and they saw my stuff and asked if I wanted to work together in some capacity. Wow. That's... Yeah. So you guys That's just... lucky. Just, fa- just <laughs> found him, <laughs> scroll around yeah, Twitter. Like, like, hey, why don't we just sign you up? legitimately yeah um basically one of my colleagues david i see saw him on twitter and like was like wow this looks really great like i want to play it and like at the time we were talking about getting more into publishing and it basically kind of became one of these things where he showed the team and we're like this is cool let's go bother him and we did (laughs) and (laughs) yeah it was it was a great opportunity to work together so so is is this the first game that you guys uh licensed out i guess or, or that you guys got a that you guys are publishing. This is the first game that you're publishing that you didn't develop in house. Tech, yes, we did publish a different game in the states. It was like published in Japan, and we did it for NT Creates. I'm forgetting the name oh, right now, okay. but it's technically like our first, like first and a half. Let's go with that. Uh, <laughs> but that was way oh, before uh, my time, so I don't know. You did as a striker gun vault uh, striker pack. There you go. Yeah, we did that go. one too. I love the striker pack. I didn't know you guys did that. Yeah, we, so you just we did the American the version. Yeah, we we brought it to the states. We didn't uh, have like a hands-on uh, publishing, I guess, um, kind of deal with that game. It was more of like we just brought it there. Where right. for Cyber Shadow, we actually did um, like advise um, RNA with some development choices. So I had no idea. I, I love Gunvolt. Uh, next we have games featuring ninjas or an 8-bit retro aesthetic sometimes both seem to be a very popular trend amongst indie developers what made you want to throw your hat in the ring uh, uh, yeah you go ahead his answer is I've been doing this type of art on my own and for my own enjoyment for years uh, reimagining Mega Man and Castlevania hacking ROMs with my graphics the NES platform limitations were very familiar to me I felt like I had li- lived in this ring forever just borrowed, just burrowed under like a robot mall man. It was time to poke my head out. So he's basically a fan of the of the yeah genre. He's a fan yeah. of the genre and the style, and he wanted to show show that by creating a whole game in that aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so this was the only question that I actually asked. Will Will wrote all the other questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the only one that I shoved because in because I care. Yes, uh, but I wanted to ask: Cyber Shadow is being noted for its difficulty among fans of 2D platformers, like Will <laughs> just mentioned. Uh, yep. Did you set out to make a challenging game, and how hard was it for you as a developer to balance that difficulty? Uh, and he said, "I always wanted to make a game that keeps you focused, like a true ninja. You should be able to maintain your cool, observe carefully, and apply your skills." I didn't necessarily set out to do a hard game per se but rather a game that would stay interesting for me to play even as I had deep, a deep understanding of the underlying mechanics. It was aimed to maintain a level of challenge even if you were at the top of your game. The hard part was coercing new players to learn these mechanics without, doing too fa- without going too far into frustration territory. The slow trickle of new skills is part of this teaching process. Yeah, I, I noticed while I'm playing the game, there's like uh, you you earn new abilities as you go through it. Yeah, uh, like and you earn a lot of new abilities, so you're like yeah. all, each level you basically gain something new. Um, and right after you get it, there's a part of the level that's supposed to teach you how to use that. Um, yeah. So I guess that would be coercing new players into into learning these these new mechanics. But yeah, I know that it's difficult to like gauge like. I mean, obviously, he's developing this game, uh, so he's played it a lot. <laughs> so it's some yeah. somebody who's like just playing it for the first time is not going to be as well versed as he is. And I know that's a problem with like people who design Mario Maker levels. Like you design it uh, and you breeze through it easily, and you think, oh, okay, this is going to be fine, and then nobody else could beat it because they they don't know like yeah. the intricacies of the level that you built out. Um, also, when I was at PAX, I was playing it in front of him. And uh, he, 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 oh, that's right. We did. We did he, play it in front of him. I, I was playing one of yeah. those levels that I played in front of. So, like, I, the second time I played, so we, we played it at PAX 20, uh, 2019, 19. And, then, and then I played yeah. it again in 2020. Yeah. Um, I think the second time I played it, um, 
I uh, you, you, I think I played like a very early level and then a very late level. And mm -hmm. uh, so I gained all these abilities and didn't know what the hell to do with any of them. Um, but he... It, it was a, it was a lot more difficult back then because I didn't learn any of that stuff. But he was over my shoulder and I was kept dying on one part over and over and over again. He yeah. goes, "Yeah, you don't have to do that. You can just walk past that part." <laughs> and I was like, God damn it. <laughs> "So yeah, um, anyway. I guess for a question for you, Celia. So from a publisher standpoint, how do you market a game that has such a notoriously high difficulty? Like, like you have this game." That you know isn't for everyone it's for people who like a specific challenge how do you go about like telling the world that you know try to you because I'd, I'd imagine you want to get as many people playing as possible but also letting them know you're gonna die a lot <laughs> like um that, that's a very good question and uh yeah there is a difficulty um with marketing it for a difficult game. But it's kind of one of those things where like the game is difficult, but it's not like cruel um, right. at certain parts. And <laughs> it's basically <laughs> one of the things where like it does teach you. And since it does like stay like true to that, like, you know, retro eight bit aesthetic, like the challenge that is like cognitively associated with it um, kind of like it gets like when people are looking at the game, they see that it's like very close to like 8-bit style and they're like, oh, that's going to be difficult. Like I remember, you know, Batman yeah. or I remember Ninja Gaiden and it's like, that was hard. This is probably going to be hard too. I think it actually would probably be harder to market a game that would be significantly easier than the standard that was put for those games in the past. Right. Because they'd go in like all pumped to like die horribly and then like... And then they just beat the through. game in like two minutes, yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't go over well. So, yeah. yeah. I guess that's a good point. I haven't thought of that. Like, it, it looks it looks like an NES game, and those games are hard. So, like, you should yeah. know what you're getting so into. And what you, do you, you expect? Yeah. Once you show this in front of people, they should be like, "Okay, that looks like it's gonna be hard." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a, a departure from Shovel Knight, which was uh, was Shovel Knight hard? Will I? I'm, I have a bad gauge. I, I don't remember. Probably. I don't. Think I'm not it was. very good at those types of games. I don't. I don't think it was. I mean, towards the end, maybe. But yeah, I also played uh, it. In what? When did it come out? Like 2013. Yeah. Yeah, like 2014. Yeah. That yeah. Range. I played it on the 3DS. Yeah. Nice. I think that was one of the few things I kickstarted. Thank you. I think that was <laughs> one of the few games worth kickstarting. Yes. That and uh, what's the what's what's what was the Mega Man one? Mighty Number no. Nine. Yeah, that was worth it. <laughs> yeah. All right, what, what's the next question? Uh, in previous interviews, you've said that Cyber Shadow is influenced by games like Super Mario, uh, Ninja Gaiden, Contra, and Batman on NES. Of the games that influenced you, what about them made you want to try and recapture their aesthetic slash feel? And then he said... Some of these games had details that slowly faded into darkness. I found this to be especially captivating as it left room for the imagination. Suggestions of detail instead of defining everything to the T. All of these games had a very strong atmosphere, but each still felt unique. I desire a unique atmosphere for me too. It's a very deep answer. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, there were limitations for the NES, so like, uh, they couldn't like you know draw out every little like you know, part of the world you had to like fill in the blanks a little bit yourself right but they they were still able to do a lot like contra you know the first level had a very uh you know rambo in the jungle vibe but then at the more you played the game it turned into alien uh very quickly batman had this weird mix of like the movies look but also you know because it was developed in japan like very like Japanese heavy influence on the characters and the level geometry and things like that. Um, and Ninja Gaiden, obviously, the super fast ninja game. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Ninja Gaiden does this weird thing where, like, uh, you see all the characters in their like little 8 bit sprite form, and then there's there'll be a cutscene and they look completely yeah. different. <laughs> they yeah, do in their little 8 bit. But uh, Cyber Shout does a good job of, of mimicking that style, but making it a lot more like uh, easy to read, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, what else we got? Uh, what were the biggest challenges of being a solo game developer? Oh, yeah. Uh, keeping up with a healthy schedule can be difficult, especially when working at home. There's also the fact you're, quote, single threading 
uh, the development and getting stuck in any one task means nothing else is moving forward at all. I never thought about that. Yeah. So you can't have like certain chunks designated to other people. You have to just do everything. You're kind of like bottlenecked by every little problem that you that you run into. Yeah. Was yeah. was this game delayed at all? Or did it never have a release date? I don't remember. Oh, we did have a minor delay because um, we were fixing some certain things in it that um, yeah we were working on. But yeah, so it was delayed once because initially okay. I think we said summer twenty. It was like twenty twenty, and then it got pushed a little bit. Or sorry, we said initially you said fall uh, twenty twenty, and then we pushed it to twenty twenty one. Ah, okay. I just remember I played this two years ago. Yeah, <laughs> and I've waited <laughs> two years. So, uh, f- so if he's making this game all by himself, and I imagine mm-hmm. that Yacht Club has, uh, they want to get builds of the game for like you know milestone markers and things like that. Uh, once he sends you guys a build, what? What's your role then? Is it just like play testing or do you offer suggestions? Do you actually like develop some parts of it on your end or is or is he in control of all of that? So for that, I am so I guess a little bit of a rewind. Um so when we initially approached Arne, he had a majority of Cyber Shadow done. So it's not like he started oh. the game and then sent us a build. Okay. Um he sent us like the whole thing. It was like, hey guys, like okay. check it out, see what happens. Yeah. You're gonna die. Um yeah. so basically <laughs> <laughs> for that um we we're able to like offer him because we're like sorry rewinding again uh so we're at like a hands-on publisher so it's not that we just take your game and then we put it out in the world or you know we just market it and we're like there you go or we market it how we want to it's complete mm-hmm. control of the creator and so when arne like sent us the game you know we gave him feedback and it's like not only from like our experience as creating games but as gamers as well like oh that didn't feel that right like i was kind of confused there Mm -hmm. and um it'd be really awesome for arne to share like the build difference from like the original to how it is now but uh yeah we give him feedback like sometimes it's better to teach the player than just to tell them you know combining i like level of hazards as well as like teaching you a new move um and so we just gave him advice of what we've learned ourselves and he made the adjustments but we didn't make the adjustments for him he he just did it and he could choose whether to take our advice or not does that include porting it to all the different systems? Did he do that himself as well? Or did like you guys help out with that? In yeah, we, we helped out with the porting. Yeah. Okay. I'd be so impressed if he did that too. <laughs> yeah. So so how long has this, been, has this game been in development? Since I guess since a long time before you guys even got on board then. Yeah, it was like a couple years ago we got involved. But um, yeah, Arne's been working at this game or playing with the idea like for like eight years. Like it's- Holy crap. Yeah, and it's not like he's been sitting there just making the game for eight years. It's like he drew like Shadow on a napkin and was like, yeah. "This would be cool." And then like five years later, he was like, oh, "I should make something." So, so he's been working on it since before these systems were even like a like a like a thing yet. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty wild. Uh, I, I lost our place. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, due to the game's retro style, do you think it would be possible to run Cyber Shadow on an actual NES? And he said, there's effects that should be toned down, particularly layered, parallax scrolling, and some bigger bosses would need retooling. But it's definitely possible to get it very close to what the game is now. Narrowing the game to a 4 by 3 aspect ratio would also require level design changes and possibly slight reduction of running speed so that you have time to react to objects appearing from the sides. I, I was ex- I wasn't expecting like an answer like that. I was expecting him to just go no. <laughs> yeah. But he like actually thought about this. He was like, yeah, no, we could totally do it. It would just be just be a little bit of work. And he laid because, out all of the work that he would need to do. Yeah, because it was interesting to me because you look at games like this and like Shovel Knight and even something like Sonic Mania where they look like the games from back in the day, and you know initially you think oh they can run on the old systems no problem. But then you start to think about things like, you know, the widescreen format and the background effects and like just even character animations, all this other stuff. And then you start to realize that uh, maybe you can't run on classic systems. But Cyber Shadow to me looked like a candidate to, to possibly get a port to an NES if somebody was crazy enough to do that. I know the guy who makes Retro City Rampage... Uh, the, the most recent game he made, he actually tried porting it to like the PlayStation 2 <laughs> because 
he just he just he's a nutcase like that um cool. <laughs> yeah but yeah no because i was just i was just wondering like because it looks like it looks the most like an nes game more so than a lot of other games that try to ape that look so i just you know figured i'd ask uh, so that, if if you do port it to the NES, let me know. I want a cut of that. I want a cartridge. Yeah. I want a yeah. <laughs> on cartridge. Uh, last question we had for him was, what's next for um, uh, Mechanical Head Studios? Would you want to try another retro style game, a sequel to Cyber Shadow, or something new and completely different? And he says, lots of rest, cookies, studying, drawing, <laughs> and playing the games I missed during the past five years. I'm fond of pixel art, so future projects will probably be pixely. Spaceships are cool, too. Regardless of what it may be, I simply hope to be able to keep making games in the future. All right, so a spaceship game. You hear it here first. We, yeah, we, there you go. Game, <laughs> my, my um, I mean, I, I, was, I would imagine a vacation is warranted for, the, for this man after oh, definitely. developing this definitely. game for eight years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm sure he's always thinking about, like, what's next. You know, and I, I didn't expect like him to just announce Cyber Shadow Two immediately, or you know, announce like an, a JRPG style game. Well, 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 I'd imagine is Mechanical Head and, and Yacht Club working on like like patches and stuff to like you know if there's any if there's been any problems that like weren't foreseen that like happened when the game got put out to the public. Well, yeah, of course we'd like announce patches for it and like take care of things if they're like where certain bugs are brought to our attention. Mm-hmm. So he's not just like on on a beach somewhere. He's like still working. Yeah, he's, he's in his house. He does have cookies. Um, oh, I, okay. so I you messaged him and told him to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I did message him to help him to go to sleep. So that was something. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> it's like, why are you up? He lives in Finland. It's it's late there. Uh. <laughs> I mean, he, he took a lot of time to answer all these questions. So I'm going uh, yeah. tell him thank you. I'm very grateful for that because I know he doesn't have any time right now or he <laughs> hasn't for the last like month, right? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing though? Because you also haven't had a lot of time in the last week because uh, you've been doing this. So are you like winding down yet or no? Are you still on like full PR mode? Uh, full PR mode. It doesn't ramp up for like we'll ramp down for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it's been a lot of fun. Like just you know, uh, speaking with fans, like you know, talking to media, like you guys. I am also creating more content, working with platforms to help promote it more. Like there's there's a lot of fun stuff planned for uh, Cyber Shadow, and so it's no end in sight. So how long does how long does this usually last for? A game like the game is out and then you got to do like is it like a few weeks a few days a few months of pr and promotion like basically when do you get to go to sleep <laughs> no i'm like never it's marketing we don't stop <laughs> all right so basically uh, it yeah. kind of depends okay so more serious answer Be- better um, question when does this when do you get to go to sleep on cyber shadow and then move <laughs> on to the next one think i don't think we have a scheduled like support end for for cyber shadow since we're so hands-on like cyber shadow has been thrown into the mix of things that i promote Mm -hmm. um like i can't say what i'm gonna be posting next but like we have a few fun things planned that we're incorporating so it's fun okay all right so but like if you whatever comes out next year like hypothetically you guys get the license to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and you do an eight, uh, eight bit retro arcade beat em up of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes, steal this idea, please. Um, <laughs> are you still going to be, you know, pimping Cyber Shadow then? Or, well, as long as we're working with RNA, um, of course, like RNA is full control. So if you looked at me one right. day and was like, Celia, I don't like you, um, <laughs> stop marketing my game, I'd be like, okay, first of all, ouch, go back to yeah. sleep, <laughs> maybe take a nap, you'll feel better. <laughs> but also, um, okay. Um, so it just kind of depends. Uh, but let's say that we did get a really cool Teenage Mutant Ninja license, that'd be awesome. <laughs> um, I would be juggling, you know, Shovel Knight IPs, um, then also Cyber Shadow, and then Ninja Turtles. I mean, this seems to be the thing to do for studios to get like these licenses and then announce them in a really classy trailer where like the last minute you realize it's uh, something from your childhood. We saw that with IO Interactive and James Bond. We saw it with Bethesda and Indiana Jones. So, yeah, Yacht Club Games. It's a really cool trailer. And all of a sudden you see a turtle hand grab a sigh and it's like, oh, my God, Yacht Club's doing Ninja Turtles. 
okay, well, if we ever do get that AP, I will call you both and be like, hey, guess what? Right. You'll be nice. the first one to know. <laughs> yes. Nice. I don't know if it'll happen ever, but, you know. It's, it's a, a boy can dream. A boy can dream. <laughs> uh are are there i mean i think i know the answer already but are there any plans for dlc or anything for cyber shadow okay arnie needs to sleep guys stop asking things from him <laughs> all right uh, <laughs> we want more so that, so, don't stop working gonna... <laughs> yeah okay well basically arnie calls okay calls the shots so after his nap and his cookie break if he chooses to go that route we'll be sure to announce it on social media and our website and make a huge buzz about it but until then uh it's not in the pipeline yeah <laughs> that answer could have gone one or two ways one way would just be straight up no and the other way is we have nothing yeah. to announce at this time <laughs> so yeah, ask. yeah. You, you keep saying that arne has complete control I'm, I'm curious was there anything that ya club specifically said you know you have to do this or or was it was it always just like you do you man and then we'll just you know put it out there or for anything you. that he said no to yeah. Oh. Interesting questions. Um, <laughs> I think we said, uh, Arne, you need to put out the game. Um, <laughs> I think that was the number was one. Like, we have to wanna. release it. Yeah. It's like, no, it's mine. I found it and made it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I don't really, I really don't think there was anything that he said no to us on. Um. I don't know, it was a pretty collaborative process. You know, it's so, it's his IP, and so... I mean, Yaakov knows so, how to make games, with it. too. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it wasn't like you're like, hey, the kids are into multiplayer Battle Royale, so you got to put that in your game. And he was like, no. <laughs> That's crazy. No. <laughs> how would that I even work no for, a, for a 2D ninja game? Oh, well, you could yeah. just make it like Mario Royale, you dumb idiot. True. That's a shame or I don't like, like that game. What's the Game Grumps one? Soviet jump game. I don't know. That's another yeah. battle royale. Come on, Will. Use your brain. Hey, right, man. These I'm things too exist. busy thinking about Ninja Turtles. Um, Yacht Club has, I think... What games are? What games do we know that are in the pipeline for Yacht Club still? Because we have Shovel Knight Dig, and we have Shovel yeah. Knight... Pocket Dungeon. Yes. Those are the two. And that is it. That is it. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, we announced those. I think I, it was like PAX East, I want to say. Everything blends into my head before 2020. So I'm like, I don't know. Um, I don't know anything yeah, we exi- besides PAX East. So that's where I saw it. <laughs> okay, then that's where we announced it. <laughs> um, any any news on that? Any, any news on that front? Are we going to see it sometime this year? It would be really cool. But since it's still very deep in development right now, we have no updates as of yet. Stay tuned to our social media pages for announcements on our upcoming titles. <laughs> All right. I just made that up right now. I've never said that before. Uh, um, it felt natural. <laughs> is Pocket... Do we have platforms for these games or no? Still no. Nothing announced uh, okay. as of yet. Mm-hmm. So go to youtube.com slash Wolfden and watch the video from PAX East last year. And you can see a little bit of Shovel Knight Dig in Pocket Dungeon. As much information as we know about it. <laughs> Um, well, is there anything you'd like to say to people before, like, uh, they get a chance to play Cyber Shadow? Any, Celia, anybody? Um, <laughs> I, I sounded like I, I said Will, think... but I meant Well. You, your name's uh, too oh. close to, to <laughs> I, I assumed, I assumed your you name... wanted Celia to... You, well, you um, gotta change your name. Yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Um, well, um, I would like to tell people that uh, I, we hope you enjoy your ninja action adventure. And while you're playing the game, be sure to look out for secrets because there is a ton in the game. There's a lot of fun Easter eggs. And um, yeah, have fun. It is great. I've been having a great time with it. Over on twitch.tv slash wolf that everybody make sure you watch me uh, lose, lose my hat over it. It's great. Yeah. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule, your busy PR schedule, to be here yeah. on this little, little Twitch slash YouTube channel. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, we'll, uh, ba- uh, we'll see you later. Back to you, uh, yeah. Will and Bob from the future. Yeah. And we're back. Thanks, uh, hey. past Will and Bob. Yeah. We don't have hover cars, guys. Sorry. No, and it's still cold. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Yacht Club over there. But we forgot to mention this yesterday. Yeah, Yacht uh, Cyber Shadow is up for Player's Choice for January 2021. Yeah, uh, over on the PlayStation blog, they're doing you know Player's Choice best game of January. Um, I think it's only oh no, there's a couple of choices. Your choices are Auto Chess, Cyber Shadow, Hitman 3, Oleja, ReZero, Starting Life in Another World, The Prophecy of the Throne, Scout Pilgrim vs. the World, uh, and Tohu. Um, it's going to be a tough battle against Scott Pilgrim, Will. Look, Scott Pilgrim already came out. Like that, yes. that's, a, that's a game that's 10 years old. It had its chance. It's great that it's back. I love this game, but... You know, it's it's time for Cyber Shadow. Also, we don't know anybody who helped put this game out, do we? <laughs> that is true. Just well, saying. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Just saying. I mean, I played Cyber Shadow. I don't think I played any of those games, actually. I played zero of these games. <laughs> I only played Cyber Shadow. So You didn't play Scott Pilgrim back in the day? Nope. I wasn't really interested. I don't like beat-em-ups that much. How are we brothers? It's just mashing. It's a lot of mashing. It's yeah, it's mashing, but there's a satisfaction to it. If if like it's, if it's you or a friend, you and a friend against like a whole wave of enemies, and you and you know how to take them down, and you like try to get just push through it as best you can. There's a satisfaction to it. I, I guess beat em ups just take me back to like arcades where you're just they're designed to dump quarters into. Right. Yeah, a lot of them fall into that category, but a lot of good ones don't. Anyway, I'll and a lot of good ones the, do. I'm putting this link in the chat. Everybody vote for Cyber Shadow. Yeah. Or vote for whatever you want. I don't want to influence your decision, but I mean, Cyber I Shadow's do vote for Cyber there, Shadow. You know. Uh, I, but if you're not here in the chat, it's uh, PlayStationBlog.com. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot more to go through, and we got to plow through it because we are running late here. Yes. Oh, uh, might have to drop off some of these quickies we have here. Oh, boy. This is some big news uh, that a lot of people were talking about and asking about. Um, did, it came out yesterday that Nintendo is changing its multiplayer server architecture. Oh, Wow. I, I, I want to be careful about how I talk about this because there's a lot of technical stuff and I yeah. uh, don't understand it 100%. So I don't want to... Uh, it's very easy to say the wrong thing. When it was first reported by yeah. uh, Nintendo Everything, I think, um, they got some of the information wrong and people were mad about it. So mm -hmm. I'm tr I'll try to do my best here. Uh, but Nintendo is, according to Reddit, Nintendo is replacing its 18-year-old multiplayer server system Nex with NPLN in preview phase with the Monster Hunter Rise demo testing server load. So the Monster Hunter Rise demo and the Monster Hunter Rise game is the first game to use this new server architecture. <laughs> um, so this is tweeted by Thomas and then quote tweeted by Oatmeal Dome. So... Thomas net underscore MC says Nintendo is preparing a big multiplayer overhaul, probably for games in development in 2020. Every task currently taken by NEX is going to be switched over to NPLN. It's currently in a preview phase and Monster Hunter demo was a way to test how it worked under load. I called it server architecture before. That might not even be it. It might just be uh, the... Uh... Uh, the 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 type of multi it's just the type of multiplayer that it is <laughs> right <laughs> it's the multiplayer system that's a better way to describe it um and then uh oatmeal dome quote tweeted it and said nintendo is replacing its multiplayer system system next used in most if not all of their online games since 3ds and wii u with a new system called npln monster horizon was the first game to use it in public why did he just repeat what he quote tweeted um but then he goes on to say, I talked about what NX is in my article about Splatoon 2's matchmaking and netcode. And then you click on that and then it doesn't take you any. Oh, no, here it is. I clicked on this yesterday and it freaking uh, took me to his main page. 
As I said there, NEX is at least 18 years old by now, so it's dated hell. The Splatoon 2 version has an unused function to check to see if it's running on Windows 98. <laughs> so that does, I mean, that part doesn't mean it's like a bad system, but it just means that it's, that's how dated it is, is that yeah. it has a function to check for Windows 98. Um, I, I've read this article a long time ago when I was researching, uh, you know, Nintendo's multiplayer situation. Yeah. Um, cause Splatoon 2 actually runs good compared to all the other Nintendo Switch Online games. Right. Part of that is because there is a lot of other players. So if one fails, it's not so much a big deal for the other guys because they're all, it's yeah. like a web. Um, but Smash Brothers is just no excuse for that sort of uh, <laughs> tomfoolery. Yeah. Uh, common question. Will it result in better online? For now, probably not. Nintendo's primary goal is likely to make this transition as seamless as possible to make sure that you don't notice anything changed. Once done, then they can add new things to improve existing ones. Uh, and then there's also a Nintendo Life article that repeats a lot of the same stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, this is basically just repeating everything we know about already. So yeah, uh, Nintendo is finally doing something about its absurdly dated um, online functionality. So, um, Good. <laughs> yeah, so it. I mean, this isn't going to mean games are going to all of a sudden be good. It doesn't mean that, you know... Your... Yeah, it doesn't mean connecting to games is going to be less of a pain in the ass. It doesn't mean that there's going to be you know, any less lag or delay or whatnot. Um, it just means that they're trying. So, so, so the big deal to everybody is the switch online, uh, connection. Like, like, uh, mm -hmm. when you're playing a multiplayer game online, that's a Nintendo game. It runs like crap. Uh, so it, this doesn't mean that S smash ultimate is going to be any good anytime yeah. soon. It doesn't mean that Mario maker online is suddenly going to be good. Future games, might get better slowly yeah. starting with monster hunter rise um it should be noted that i played the demo and the demo had a glitch where um if you had a really big friends list or a lot of people on your friends list uh it, it, the, there was insane lag not lag um really bad frame rate uh so it wasn't really lag it was more so the frame rate uh, but the game the connection felt good i mean i'll have to keep that in mind when i actually play monster hunter rise to see how much it improved mm -hmm. uh but like will said it doesn't mean that con like getting your friends to play with you and like the actual uis are going to be any good like <laughs> nintendo is still really bad at that stuff so um the connection might get better which is a very good thing and that's all we really care about but getting into a game with somebody else might still be a lot of like you're gonna be jumping through hoops yeah um so this is good news but again it's gonna be a little bit until we actually see some hard like uh changes in, with nintendo yeah. but it's good to know it's good to know that they're uh they're trying they at least know that they have a problem uh another big deal nintendo news was that Nintendo just they, they they kind of they kind of touched on a Switch Pro. So kind, what exactly happened? It. Yeah. So there was an investor meeting or, or an earnings mm -hmm. call uh, a few days ago. And usually whenever that happens, we do a whole show on that and we go through yeah. it. Uh, it. It's it's a call where a bunch of investors uh, directly ask the heads at Nintendo questions and they answer. And a lot of these mm -hmm. investors ask really stupid questions. <laughs> and uh, and some of them ask questions that we would want to know. And Nintendo has to answer them. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is from Boy Genius Report. Uh, the novel coronavirus pandemic has impacted everything about daily life, hurting the global economy as millions of people found themselves out of work. This turned out to be a boon for the gaming industry. 
The more expensive PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X have sold out everywhere since being released late last year, but a record number of people were also buying Nintendo Switch, a much older gaming rig that can't compete against the new systems when it comes to raw performance. Nintendo doesn't just make hardware for gamers, of course. The Switch opens the door to a host of games that are not available anywhere else, which is a key reason why people might choose the Switch or Switch Lite over anything else. Nintendo has been rumored for a few years to be working on a pro version of the console, but the Japanese giant almost always denied those rumors. Now something changed. Nintendo just released the figures for its December quarter and chose a different way to dodge Switch Pro questions. Nintendo surprise analysts posted huge earnings for the holiday quarter. I don't know why that's a surprise to these analysts. Uh, the company moved 11.57 million Switch consoles for a total of nearly 80 million units sold since Jesus. March 20, uh, 2017. The company increased its Switch sales forecast for the fiscal year ending on March 31st to 26.5 million, indicating that demand is still strong. Covering the earnings report, Bloomberg's Takahashi Mochizuki noted that Nintendo said it has uh, enough components to make and sell the Switch for the time being, but stronger than expected demand might impact availability in some stores in Japan. So this is from Takahashi. He says, Nintendo says it has enough components, blah, blah, blah. Uh, question, new model this year? Answer, not planning to make an announcement anytime soon as we have Mario uh, version in February, the new Mario Switch coming out in two weeks, and Monster Hunter version coming out in March. So that was what they decided to say. Instead of saying, we have nothing to announce at this time, which is always what they say. Yeah. They said, we're not planning to make an announcement anytime soon because they have two versions of the Switch already coming out. But yeah. They do this a lot. Like at the end of a console's life cycle, they always have like special, like a bunch of special editions. And then they release a new version. But this kind of scares me a little bit because like I always say that a Switch Pro is just going to be an iteration of the Switch. It's going to be like the new Nintendo Switch. Right. This makes it sound like it's going to be a brand new console. And that really scares me. I don't know, because Nintendo is always cagey about everything. So, it, they, you know, all they really said was they don't have any, you know, they basically just said that they don't have anything to announce. But they but they gave a reason why they don't have anything to announce. Yeah. And, and then they said, we don't have anything to announce anytime soon. Yeah. So that means they don't have anything to announce now because they have two new consoles coming up. So that means that they have... Yeah that they have something to announce just not right now right but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be an entirely new system it could very well still be you know switch 2.0 or the new nintendo switch or whatever the hell you want to call it that's true because they want people to buy the mario yeah, Monster they, Hunter versions and if there's an iteration yeah. people might hold out yeah so well, my concern is that all these really big deal games they haven't mm -hmm. been talking about them my concern is that they're holding off to make to put those out on a different console. And that is not something I would have thought, but they're making it seem that way more well, and more every day. Every day that passes where they don't talk about Bayonetta 3, Metroid Prime 4, uh, Breath yeah. of the Wild sequel, every day that passes where they don't talk about that, it seems like there's those are another generation of games. Well, hopefully they learned from not only their past mistakes but see what sony and microsoft are doing where they let you you know play current gen games on the next gen systems and also there's some degree of forward compatibility and backwards compatibility between the two where no matter what system you play it on you'll still get the gameplay you'll still get to play the game regardless of whether you're playing it on the switch or whatever next um yeah, I doubt that because it's Nintendo. Um, Nintendo used to be really good at backwards compatibility uh, for handhelds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then something happened. But I yeah. mean, 
they they do things like look at Breath of the Wild. That game was supposed to come out on the Wii U, and then they're like, "We use that doing good. We're making the Switch. Put it on the Switch. We'll put wait. it on the Switch." Yeah, but they put it on both. So yeah. something like uh, so if a game is a next gen game, like if they have a completely new console generation, um, mm-hmm. they could put Bayonetta three on both, and it probably wouldn't yeah. even hurt graphically, like even a yeah. little bit. Um. So who knows? We don't know. We know Nintendo's up to something, and there's a reason why we haven't been seeing many games. Um, but I think I, I think this pretty much solidifies that there's that there, there's something. I mean, we knew that yeah. they're always working on something. Every console company's working on something, um, like behind the scenes. But this just yeah. this just tells us that. I mean, they said we'd have nothing to announce anytime soon. This tells me yeah. it's a little sooner than we think. <laughs> that we've been thinking that me and will have been thinking because everybody else is like this thing's coming out like tomorrow we're gonna switch yeah yeah always assume that your cons your favorite console makers are already working on the next gen system don't expect them to announce it when you think they're going to announce it yeah our previous uh speculation was that uh it was supposed to come out in march but it's been delayed because of the pandemic yeah so i'm gonna say friggin' september we're gonna i'm gonna just wait and see because that's already after uh mario and monster hunter yeah all right well burger king's got toys yay check it out nintendo Uh, toys and super mario meals have arrived at burger king meals you got a silver mario kart you got a a, uh zelda boy zelda from what's that boy zelda uh link's awakening link's awakening what is this one what is you get a mario oh. maker one tom nook that's a yeah. weird tom nook thing oh it's a, it's a maze <gasps> mario maker i need that one you got splatoon and you got uh yoshi uh L- luigi's mansion yeah. ghost luigi i need that mario maker one all right looks like i'm gonna be eating a lot of burger king uh what's the meal it's probably just a kid's meal they said there's a Super Mario meal. Uh, if you purchase the Super Mario meal on the Burger King app or online at BK.com between the 8th and February and the 22nd of February, you'll be entered for a chance to win a Nintendo Switch prize pack, which includes a Nintendo Switch system and a copy of the new game. Super Mario meal comes with a Whopper sandwich, small fries, and a small fountain drink. Oh, and 100 My Nintendo Platinum points. <gasps> I mean, Burke every day this week. So, all right, before we move on, I got I to gotta bitch him on about the Platinum points. Those are the most useless points. <laughs> I got... Why is that, Will? I had, like a, I had a lot, so I redeemed it for this actually very nice notebook. That is cool. Um, yeah, it's got Mario and Green Mario on the back. It's got... <laughs> uh, you can, you know, use it as a journal. Problem is... I redeemed all my points, which meant which meant it was free plus five whatever shipping and handling. So it's like that's that's not free then. It's only five bucks for a cool for a cool and this like, thing. And that's like the only cool thing there that was on the website. Everything else is just like a, a wallpaper for your desktop or like you know, a, a sticker or whatnot. It's just, it's. I think they're dumb. I think you should be able to redeem them for gold points because those you can actually use for something. I'm checking out. Do I have? Do I have a lot of points? I didn't know you can get physical items. I now I. Yeah. Do I have a thousand four hundred and eighty platinum points? Uh, I think I, I think the notebooks. I think the notebooks sold out. <sighs> where, where? Uh oh, redeem points. Yeah. Can I show this without? Yeah, I can. Uh, you get a mini guide. A lot of digital stuff. Yeah, that's. I, I just don't feel like that's worth it. Nintendo store rewards. Oh yeah. Oh, you can get holiday cards. Okay, dude. Yeah, everything's out of stock. Yeah. Damn. I'll have to keep an eye on that because I have. Yeah, a lot of points. All right. Well, yeah, there's a full playthrough of that canceled GoldenEye 2007. Uh, GoldenEye, you just take it away. 
<laughs> I would love to, but my computer is not letting me. Okay. Uh, Rare was working on a remake for their popular N64 shooter, Goldmine 007. It was almost done, but due to some rights issues, the game was canned. Over the years, footage and screenshots have leaked, but now we have a full 4K60 uh, playthrough to see what it might have been. Like the later release, Perfect Dark Xbox Live Ooh. Arcade remake, this remake would have fe- included new textures, smoother gameplay, and multiplayer. It was canceled back in 2008, though over the years, gameplay and screenshots have leaked. Now uh, We now have a full long play of the game running in 4K60. The footage comes from YouTuber Grazaloo, uh, who uploaded the full playthrough of the canceled game using an emulator. As to where he, they got this build, how they got it, or who provided it to them, they won't say. In the description of the video, they claim that this is the that this build of the game. Wait, sorry. In the description of the video, they claim that this build of the game will release in 2021. Oh. This isn't the first footage of the game that's popped up online. Back in 2016, Rare Thief uploaded about half an hour of footage um, of what appears to be the same build of GoldenEye 007 remake. This looks friggin' awesome. Th- th- yeah. This is like, this is kind of what we wanted back then when it was yeah. being talked about. Yeah. Th- this they released is... a perfect dark remake, though, right? Yeah. Uh, that game, it was literally the same game, just uh, the textures looked a lot better. Um, and they upscaled it to 1080p and they mapped the controls to better suit an Xbox controller. But they didn't change anything else. The this level geometry the was the same. This looks like they yeah. did the same thing. Yeah. I, I, um, I think what happened was they did this game and they realized they couldn't release it because of some weird licensing issues. And yeah. then uh, they decided, all right, fine, we'll just have to do Perfect Dark then instead. Yeah. I mean, they, they were probably going to... They already had... The, they could just, you know, use the same... They're probably going to do both this. anyway. But, you know, there's, you know... The name Goldeneye like means something different than Perfect yeah. Dark does. So yeah. like this would have been a big get if this if this had gotten released, especially um, back then having the online multiplayer on Xbox that would have been huge. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's not as big of a deal to say I'm playing Perfect Dark multiplayer on Xbox. Yeah, like saying that you're playing friggin' Goldeneye multiplayer, that's a big deal. Um. I don't know if yeah. I buy it that he says this game's coming out in 2021. I don't know if I buy that. I mean, I mean, I'm probably a the leaked the leaked build that he's playing will get like released in 2021. Oh, like 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 they'll leak it. Okay. Yeah. So that I can see. Yeah, I don't see like the company releasing this. Yeah, because you got to remember this is made this was originally made by Nintendo and Rare. You know, Rare got bought by Microsoft, so both Nintendo and Microsoft have some sort of ownership over this game but not only that you know they got to work with you know eon productions and dan jack who own the 007 license which is currently being made uh made into a game by io interactive yeah there's a lot of uh oh that looks great yeah the head of trees and stuff yeah no it, the game looks really good especially for a game from 2007 I mean, this is a game yeah. from 98. Yeah, 98, the Via 2007. Um, yeah, I would I would have loved to play this. This looks this yeah. looks awesome. I uh, mean, I'm still holding out hope because now that Microsoft is buddy-buddy with Nintendo, that they can work something out together and with Eon Productions and Dan Jack to put, you know, just for this, GoldenEye on Switch and Xbox with cross system multiplayer. Yeah, that would, that would be, be great. That would be fantastic. I would buy it on both systems. <laughs> so it's good. I, I like seeing a little bit of gaming history get leaked like that. Yeah. That's great. Leak, leak all yeah. the leak all the stuff. Leak everything. Uh, all right. Well, let's pick some of the greatest hits out of these quickies here. There All right. Have. Uh, I mean, real quick, we just show the box art. MLB The Show 21 uh, has, an, has a release date for the Xbox Series X. The reason why this is a big deal is because MLB The Show is Sony's first party baseball series. Yes. So, so 
I mean, we had we knew this was coming. Uh, like they announced that MLB the Show is going to be released on other systems other than uh, PlayStation, and now we have our first look not only at the box art, but we have a release date. It'll be April twentieth. It'll launch on for the first time on Xbox One and Series X, in addition to Sony platforms. That's good to know for uh, yeah. baseball fans. Yes. Well, I mean, it's a start in you know the the greater uh, cooperation between the t- you know the two biggest rivals in the gaming industry right now, Microsoft and Sony. So first we had you know cross cross platform play. We had Microsoft releasing games like Cuphead and whatnot on Sony systems and Minecraft, um, and now we have Sony doing the other thing, do, going prob- the other way. This is probably some pressure from, um, you know, Major League Baseball being like... Well, yeah, because MLB The Show is the only, really the only baseball sim game available that's like on the same level as like Madden or FIFA. And, yeah, you know, so, it's so been a Sony were, game for years. Yeah. They were probably like, can we please put it on something else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, you got yourself a G.I. Joe's Fortnite Snake Eyes <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, Snake Eyes is the latest uh, pop culture character coming to Fortnite, and uh, to commemorate it, the this the uh, the event, uh, Hasbro is making a limited edition uh, Snake Eyes at Fortnite action figure. Um, it is available for a limited time. Yes, I pre-ordered it. Not happy mm-hmm. about it. It does look but- sick. It does, and especially because I have the regular version of Snake Eyes, and it's it's just a black action figure, mm-hmm. and like I get like that's the joke because the original Snake Eyes, the reason why he was all black was because it was cheaper to not paint him, so that they basically just released an unpainted figure, but he became the most popular character in the series, um, and this figure is really nice because it adds a lot of like nice details to it. It's the first, apparently it's the first Snake Eyes figure to have the G.I. Joe star logo on it, which is cool. But it's, it also comes with all this other wacky Fortnite crap <laughs> that I'm just going to put in a, in a storage box somewhere. Yeah. They didn't um, need to do that. Yeah. And also it's $40. Mm-hmm. There's another, it, it's it's out of they don't make it anymore but there was another snake eyes from this same line same mold that came with a full weapon rack and a whole bunch of different weapons like in the same model of you know the gi joe classified series that was a part of also 40 bucks also a much better accessory kit um but i'm, I'm getting this <laughs> uh it says in this article they did sarah connor yeah, they did Sarah Connor and I think uh, the T-800. I did not know that. They they had so many freaking characters in that stupid Fortnite. game. I did not know that they yeah. did this. That is freaking awesome. I don't, rem- I don't remember if it was Sarah uh, Terminator Dark Fate, Sarah Connor. Oh, no, it's, it is classic Sarah Connor. Okay. It's good Sarah Connor. <laughs> um, finally, we have... Uh... Apex Legends, it, it, oh, this isn't loading for some reason. Apex Legends, finally, we have a release date for the Switch. We've been talking March about this 9th, for a like, long time. Like a real, a real uh, release date. This is we officially about, like, from the Apex Legends Twitter account. They're saying March 9th, this yes. is when you get in the game. The leaked mm-hmm. uh, the leaked uh, date was sometime in February, early February. Um, and that was, and I kept saying like that we don't know. This uh, this just sounds like maybe the Japanese Apex Legends YouTube account didn't get the memo, and that's why they put that date in the description. Now we have an official date, March 9th. So uh, I'm excited. I'll give it a try. Yeah, maybe this will get me back into Apex. Uh, that's it. Anything else yeah. you want to touch on here? Roger Craig Smith isn't uh- Sonic anymore. Yeah, that was that was just sad. I I really liked him as Sonic, but it's probably because we're also getting a new Sonic show to, coming to Netflix called Sonic Prime, uh, so that'll be interesting. Uh, Google has sh- I wanted to just touch upon Google has shut down oh, yeah. their first party Stadia Studio, um, so they're pretty much only going to focus on uh, third party titles on the Stadia store. They're not going to make their own games. 
Um, which I, I feel like I feel like that might be the first step in the na- in the uh, the stadia coffin. You know? Yeah, the first nail. First in the nail. Coffin. Coffin. Yeah. That's what it is, because like they they got these first party studios to make games exclusive to Stadia to to entice people to play on Stadia, and now they're just like, nah, forget it, shut it down. I wonder what they um, were working on. I know, and like they they, you know, they, they, they probably uh, Google probably had no idea how much money and time it took to make a a, a good game. Yeah. And also talent. Like you can't just throw money at uh at a developer and hope that they're gonna make a good game. You gotta get good people in yeah. on it. And, I think uh, that was actually one of the things they said. Was so, like they threw like money and ta- they threw money at talent, hoped they could do something and they just couldn't. Yeah, so uh I think I think they realized game development's hard and maybe we are yeah. not in, in it for the right reasons. Um I mean they 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 had Jade Raymond, famous from like the the Assassin's Creed games, Splinter Cell Blacklist, Watch Dogs. Um, she worked with uh, Electronic Arts. Um, that motive she formed Motive Studio to work on uh, Star Wars Battlefront Two. So they had like a big name to help them make games, but then they're just like, nah, forget it, shut it down. I think that the I mean. First party stuff isn't really the 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 draw to Stadia. The 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 yeah. selling point to Stadia should be, I want the new cool game. I don't have a new cool console to play it on. I just want to spend sixty dollars, not five hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah, that should be the selling point for Stadia. And they're not, they're not even. That's not even what they're trying to sell it as. Yeah. So that's their problem. It's not. It's not that they don't have any good first parties. They got right, plenty of but, great third parties. But the point of a first party game is to entice people to, you know, play the game on that platform. You know, right. that's, you know, that's the point of Nintendo first party games, Sony first party games, Microsoft first party games, and presumably Stadia first party games. I don't even think there, I think there might have been one first party Stadia game. And that's it. So 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 Microsoft is learning the value of first party games because they bought a million studios. But a lot of yeah. those studios they're putting on other platforms. Yeah. A lot of those games that those studios are True. making, they're putting on other platforms. Yeah. You you're buying my, a Microsoft system for the for the platform, for 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 mm-hmm. Game Pass and for the how great the console is to use. It's just an easy thing to just boot up and yeah. instantly start playing stuff. Um uh, you bought you you get Stadia just to boot, just to freaking get a game to work without any of this yeah. other crap, uh, but they don't they don't sell it like that. Yeah, they want to be like the big boys, but they got to think way different because this is a different thing. I think at least Google like realized. I think that they they couldn't pretty much make a, fir- a true first party because first party games are supposed to be like the best games, the showcase games, and I guess they realized they couldn't do that. So they shut down the, the shut down their first party studios before, you know, it got too expensive. I don't know if you've ever like read up on Amazon's first party video games developers. That's the one that I read up on briefly, and it said that they tried to throw money at games. Yeah, and it and just it, didn't it's work. just a disaster over there. Nobody knows what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um. And it, it's I think the worst part about it all is like 150 people just lost their job. <laughs> that is the worst part about it. Yeah. So hopefully they can all get ba- back on their feet. Hopefully, you know, other uh, studios will like hire them so that they can, you know, keep keep working and actually make a game and release a game. All right, Will. All right. It's Tweet of the Week time. Do it. Tweet of the Week. Tweet of the Week. Tweet of the Week. This is from uh, Thuggers. It is a reply to, we're proud to announce Apex Legends is coming to the Switch. And it says, let's go! Can't wait! And it's a picture. Uh, it's just full HD and it's all like, <laughs> it's all pixely and garbagey. That's funny. And there's a, I have another tweet here that is the mm-hmm. Resident Evil tweet saying, your love for Lady 
Demi Treshu. Sure. Is loud and clear. Here's a message from the Rari Village art director, Tomo Nori uh, Takano, along with a very curious fact you may have wondered about, and it's him revealing that she is freaking nine is foot six nine, feet. Nine foot six inches tall, yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Ninja Theory quote tweeted it and says, Senua is now nine feet tall. <laughs> Uh, maybe this is a good time to say hi this is your new social media ninja oh there's a new person here oh that's nice oh there you go well good first tweet yeah uh, now is when we talk to you people very quickly yes ladies and gentlemen this is the part of the show we will answer uh, select select few questions and comments from last week's Wolf Den podcast that were posted on the YouTube channel uh, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast and of course Ladies and gentlemen, watching the show right now, please start leaving your questions and comments so we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. All right. Uh, Dan Newall from last week says, as someone who works on a computer all day drafting, the ability to switch to a console and play is refreshing. So I consider a subscription fee for online games to be an okay trade-off for not having to be on a PC. That said, it definitely needs to be affordable. That this sounds like somebody who's just at a computer all day and they just want to move to the couch. Yeah, which is understandable. I'm the opposite. I like <laughs> sitting at my computer the whole day. <laughs> nah, man. When this is done, I'm gonna unhook my laptop and I'm gonna go make the audio version on my couch. <laughs> I'm gonna do that too. I'm gonna sit on because I gotta write after this. I gotta I gotta be on a laptop to write because it forces me to like focus. If I got yeah. two monitors, it's not it's not good. Uh, Doofer from last week says, your usual topic of the show is some Nintendo thing no one cares about. Now when it's something negative, you pay attention. What was it last week? It was um, Xbox raising and then changing the price of gold. Oh, well, here's the thing. Uh, we... It's usually Nintendo because most of our subscribers care about Nintendo stuff because we're... Yeah. We're... Uh, we kind of lean towards Nintendo because that's the stuff that does well for us because, again, our subscribers really care about that. And YouTube yeah. is like, these guys are the Nintendo guys. If they do anything else, we're going to punish them algorithmically. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's a Nintendo thing. Quote, no one cares about. Meanwhile, that's the stuff that does good. So, yeah. Sorry, we got to we gotta eat. Um. Daniel Misner says, I came here from the audio only for the balloon pick. The balloon pick? Did you have balloon stuff? Wait. No, I don't know. Well, maybe there's a tweet of the week situation. Ah. Uh. Uh, Mimi says, I am here for the coffee content. Good. Good. Uh, f- expect more coffee talk in 2021 I, from you I guys got, the podcast. I got that grinder. I didn't get the oh. I didn't get the barista though. I no, I didn't get the oh, encore. No. I did get a bre- I'm having a stroke. <laughs> I did get a barazza. I didn't get mm-hmm. the encore. I got okay. the um the Sete 270WY. And I got that because that's the one that weighs the co- it weighs it as it pours it out. So I literally just go boop, boop, and it pours exactly the right amount that I need every single okay. time. And I pull it out. And so far, it's great. But my coffee's getting a little watery now. My espresso's a little watery. And that's my fault. So I got to work on that. I, th- I, think, I think this grinder makes the grinds way more it's a more consistent grind all around it's a burr grinder right yeah there i was using a burr grinder yeah. before yeah those those are supposed to be more consistent with the with the grinding i was using one before but i was using a hand grinder so i think that that wasn't so yeah. consistent because it's literally the consistency of my hand um yeah but no, normally i just hit the button on the breville and uh it just pours what i need but it always does too much water yeah. Uh, and now I'm starting to notice it more that the grind is more consistent. So uh, I have to I have to manually do the right amount of coffee. I have to play with it. 
I got a lot of oh, finagling to do. In the event of a software update, it can be installed wirelessly via integrated Bluetooth using Apple phone or tablet. What can be installed? There you go. Uh, software update for your coffee grinder. Holy shit. I'm on. The, I'm, I'm looking up on the website right now, and I'm just scrolling down, and that was in on the uh, two, 270WI specific features. Before Sam was uh, in the living room with one of his friends, they just got done working out, and they were doing uh, meditation exercises. Yeah. And, and I was in the kitchen making my coffee, my brand new grinder. <laughs> And they were like, breathe wow. in and out. Empty your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Matthew uh, Cullen says, Will, what comics are you currently reading and what are your opinions on the DC Universe State and beyond? Uh, I, I have not been keeping up with Future State at all. Um, I've, I meant to. like I actually want to read a bunch of those, but I'll probably just do that after the fact as for what i'm currently reading i'm not following a lot of monthly books i'm following fantastic four star wars detective comics and um ninja turtles last ronin which is delayed and i do not like that (laughs) um but i have been trying to catch up on my backlog a lot i am almost caught up with tom king's batman run that is a very good run and anybody who doesn't like it is wrong (laughs) <laughs> straight up it gets really weird and like i can see why some people like might you know not like it but re- if you read it all at once it is it is fantastic it is so good uh all right i'm in the chat uh gcxc right. says the one year beat a uh penis balloon from the very beginning of the show oh one year balloon right Still, uh, still afloat, by the way. Of course. Of course. You wouldn't get anything yep. less, Will. Yep. Uh, the coffee grinder gets DLC. <laughs> I'm waiting for the coffee grinder remastered. Yeah. <laughs> when will the video about Switch games come out? Thursday. Thursday, hopefully at 11 a.m. unless there's a problem. But if you are a subscriber here, you get the video a few hours early whenever I finish it. Uh over on discord.gg slash wolfden in the supporter only channel uh play daddish i don't know what that is uh meta session says i almost i became almost exclusively a console gamer once work from home started because now i can hardly stand to be in my office after work is over yeah i i'm fully aware that my life is just <laughs> fucked because <laughs> i'm just here at my desk all day the yeah. whole day until i make coffee and then i come back some are previously asked in the chat about will's thoughts about wandavision and the secret reveal uh wandavision is very good it it gets better every episode uh if you're talking about because today elizabeth olsen who plays uh scarlet witch said that there's going to be um, a surprise cameo on the level of Mark Hamill's cameo in The Mandalorian. Um, I don't know who that could be. Yeah, that's uh, not... You can, You can't... I don't... There's no way you could... What are you going to freaking revive Stan Lee? There's no way you could do that, well, I think, with Marvel. I mean... You can, I mean, they could get like Robert Downey Jr. to show up. They can get Chris Evans to show it's up. It's not the same as Luke Skywalker. Well, you can't you can't compare it. Uh, Toby Maguire would maybe be maybe, <laughs> but I mean, I don't know because you know Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans still look like Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans. Mark Hamill of 2020 does not look like the Mark Hamill of 1983. But it, it's so it's more so that like fans really wanted that Luke Skywalker and they were disappointed with the Luke Skywalker that they got in the current movies. And this was this was like a throwback to what everybody this is the type of fan service that they wanted. There's not an equivalent in the Marvel Universe. So. So and what you're saying is that they're just, retro that they're. 
that they're you're disappointed that a 70 year old man didn't take out a, a room full of robots and they want to and they wanted to somehow see a man in his mid to late 20s do that absolutely is what i'm saying okay 100 <laughs> percent. i hate i hate star wars fans bb retro says edward norton which is actually i think is maybe the one <laughs> that that could that would be so interesting if they did that um and then, then U- Uma Guma says it could be Mark Hamill. It could be. That it could just show up. That would actually be the other. So those are two great answers. It could be yeah. Edward Norton or it could literally just be Mark Hamill, which is what she yeah. means by it's the same as Luke Skywalker. <laughs> they could bring back Natasha. Okay. Uh, Black Widow. I mean, they hinted at that at the Loki trailer, though. The problem with that is that there's she's just she still has a movie coming out. So like it's, yeah. our, it's not a big deal if she comes back. Yeah. I don't know. I I don't think like I'm sure whatever the cameo is, it will be surprising and shocking. and Everybody will like cheer and whatnot. But I think it'll just be an apple and orange apples and oranges comparison, you know? Right. right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Bob, you know, control is on Game Pass. Uh, yes. Oh, wait, the new ver- wait, which version, though? Yeah, that's important. I mean, I have it, so... But I, yeah. I only have the old version. Yeah. Is it the ultimate edition is what we're looking for? Yeah. Uh, control. It's just regular control. Okay. Not the ultimate so edition. Screw that. <laughs> no, I have the disc. <sighs> All right, I think we're good. I think we're done here, right? All right. Yeah. Thanks for I'm hanging good. out, everybody. Thank, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put up an archive version of it over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast, so you can watch it on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast over on anchor.fm and your favorite podcast service of choice. No matter where you listen to us or watch us, though, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective stores. Guys, don't forget next week we're going to have Kevin Kenson on. So, yes. If you're watching this on YouTube or if you, just go to the YouTube, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast and leave comments for uh, for Kevin or us, whatever you want. Uh, and we will answer them next week. Thank you all for being here. Right now, I'm going to send you all over to uh, Sea Monster. She is reading One Piece. She's a voice <laughs> actress. So she uh, she does it. She does all the voices. It's great. It's a great time. Nice. Go over there and say hi. All right, and I will see you uh, definitely Thursday, maybe tomorrow if you're good. All right, Uh, and goodbye. Bye.